What's up, summoners? King Blair here. When we think of what the most OP units are in Epic 7, we often think of the DPSs, the Arbiter Vildreds, the Rylets, the Landys, the Seaside Bellonas, but we often overlook the units that are enabling these heroes to reach crazy levels of power that without these unsung heroes, those very strong DPSs aren't as scary as they once were. So we're going to be talking about the enablers today, who they are, what they do, and a sample built for a couple of them. So if you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and join the Discord server, link down in the description. So all right, how will the video play out? So first we're gonna talk about what an enabler is, then we'll talk about how they are different from a support, then we'll go over some examples of some enablers, and then lastly, go over some builds of the ones that I do have, and some of the units that are in the Discord. All right, enough about that. Let's get right into it. So first, what is an enabler? What is this thing I keep saying? And I'm probably going to say a million times and you're going to be tired of hearing that word enabler. Uh, but what are they? So essentially, an enabler is a unit that allows you to play a certain type of team composition or use a certain strategy in this game that you normally would not be able to do. So without this core unit, the team that you're thinking of is either considerably harder to make and it just takes way more resources or it's just not as likely to happen or just not as powerful, right? And we'll go over some examples of what some of those things are. So now the next point of the video is how do these enablers differ from supports? Because you're probably thinking, to some extent, aren't all supports technically enablers? And while you're partially right, there's a little bit more to what I'm thinking about and we'll see once we get to the first example. But for the counter argument, let's look at a unit like Angelic Mamorancy. Uh, one thing I do want to say is that all enablers are typically supports, but not all supports are enablers. And Momorancy is one of them. Momorancy, while being an extremely good support and being able to cleanse a ton of debuffs and do so much work for your team, it's not really enabling you to do anything you normally wouldn't be able to. There are many units that do what Momorancy does, right? They, they kind of do the same idea. And you know, having Momorancy is not the end of the world, right? You can still play the strategy. You can still play anti-control, uh, right? not really enabling you to use a different unique team composition that you normally would not be able to do without said unit, right? So pretty pretty, pretty basic support type, right? So it's just, it's just a support, but not an enabler. So now that we know that supports and enablers are different because inherently supports don't necessarily give you the team compositions, what do I mean by allowing you to play different play styles? So we're gonna look at our first enabler and this is just kind of the golden standard for what I am thinking about and what I want you guys to think about. Fallen Cecilia. Now, a lot of players don't think she's strong. And even to this day, they don't. They don't. There's, there's literally top level players that think she's just mediocre. And I think that's mainly because we value so much the damage dealers and the other units and forget how important utility is in this game. So let's talk about Fallen Cecilia and what she allows you to enable and why she's so strong. So if you guys didn't know, Fallen Cecilia has this barrier. And this is the skill that we're going to be talking about. The rest of the kit, yeah, it's pretty balanced. Like, yeah, an AoE skill notifier, nothing crazy. The skill 1 to provoke, it's annoying, but it's not broken. But why is this barrier such a good skill and such a good enabler? The fact that you get a barrier at the start of the turn, every turn, or at the beginning of the game allows you to play with a team composition that you normally wouldn't be able to, which is something like Shadow Squad, right? When you think of Akali and Spectre Tenebria, they are units that have to be hit but through AoE, right? If they have their stealth on, you are not breaking them out of stealth unless you are able to do damage to them. And if they have a thick barrier from Fallen Cecilia, you are not going to be able to do damage. You're not going to be able to get them out of stealth. You're able to play the team composition. Without Fallen Cecilia, Shadow Squad, a Kali and Spectre Tenebria team comp is considerably weaker and you have to go through greater lengths. You have to give units... Um, Bastion of Perlucia, you lose access to Aureus. You lose access to all this different stuff for trying to make Shadow Squad work with Spectre Tenebria and, Fawn C and, and Akali. Whereas if you had Fallen Cecilia in that team composition, that team just became a hundred times scarier and way harder to deal with. Another unit that this barrier enables is someone like Tempest Surin. You guys realize that Tempest Surin by herself, while very strong, is nothing compared to when she is with Fallen Cecilia. When, when T. Surin is with Fallen Cecilia, she reaches a completely different level in this game because she's able to survive for basically forever as long as your Fallen Cecilia is there or unless you get a bunch of dual attacks on her and she's not on a lifesteal build, right? So 
That's what I want you guys to start thinking when we think enablers. Units that let you play team compositions and raise level of other units to extreme levels. Fallen Cecilia being one of the big ones. Now, there are some other ones that, again, a lot of them are knights, and we'll talk about one that is not a knight, but some of them are also uh, going to be like, uh, the, there's a couple of, of, of mages, there's a couple of rangers, but the next one that we're going to talk about is going to be another knight. And I'm going to start pushing this because I was shocked when I asked that question, how many people of you guys had Adventure Ross built? And only 50% of you guys said you guys hadn't built. Y'all, I'm streaming later tonight and I'm going to be showcasing Ross and I will show a build later on in this video. But Ross is one of the craziest enablers in this game. And he's a free-to-play unit. And we'll also talk about another unit that's completely free that I really want to start pushing. So Ross, why is he an enabler, whereas these other knights are just very strong knights that are good and defensive, right? Ross's S2 allows you to do some not okay things with a lot of DPSs. Not only does it give your highest unit an immunity effect, that basically, without an immunity set, if you have a very fast Ross, which is what I think is the best uh, build, which is making him extremely fast, you're able to... Use this S2 continuously, giving immunity to that DPS, making it hard for your opponent to lock him down, as well as providing the ability to increase defense, and since he's a knight, also give him a knight artifact. But this skill being on such a low cooldown, and when you pair off with Spectre Tenebria, it's just insane. When you see teams with Ross with like Landy, so like uh, Landy with Ross, the things you can do with Landy with Ross are not okay because of this S2 being able to cycle continuously, push her push her up because of her attack. You can also look at things like Spectre Tenebria where you can hit two enemies every time he does this. And since Spectre Tenebria is a mage, you can bring some souls. And now you're just cycling souls like crazy and attacking units and just doing so much damage. And it's usually too much for your opponent to keep up and you win the fight. So Ross, another amazing enabler. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was also in the Fallen Cecilia one. Oh man, her with the new Landy. With, with the stealth mechanic, with Guiding Light, it's just nuts, right? Like, so Landy, Ross. Now the other one, so this is kind of where we veer off a little bit more. But we realize why she's also so good. And let's let's, let's give her the respect she deserves. Back in here, Clary, again, another free-to-play unit. Her ability to S3 lock down a unit at the beginning of the game and let you kill right off the bat because of how high her base speed is, if you pair her up with something like a Rylet or Top Model Luluka, those units are now able to one-shot almost anything in this game, right? Especially Top Mono Luluka and Riley, if they're built like damage. They're killing almost anything in this game. She's able to push units up. She's able to heal and maintain. She's able to lock down supports. She, it's one of those units that could be considered an enabler, could not. But because she combos so stupid well with single target DPSs, she is kind of an enabler. Because it's just, those DPSs were not killing that unit before you put a Falconer Clear in there, right? Uh, very unlikely you'd have to have some insane stuff because she strips, applies secret defense, provokes, locks them down, right? Locked out. So, all right, now let's move to something that's not more night based. So something a little bit less on the night base. And this is something that, again, also exemplifies the idea of an enabler a lot. And if you're someone who is unlucky enough to not have this unit, I feel for you. I really, really do because you're not able to play the incomes that you would be. Auxiliary Lots is another great example of an enabler. Because without Auxiliary Lots, you can't build units slow. Think about that. Without an Ox Lots in Arena, you can't have one of those super slow BBKs unless you build like a Singelica combo with like a Crimson Armin slash an Elena, which is so much harder and they don't give an attack, like you two units versus what one unit does, right? Ox Lots is another insane enabler and an example that not all enablers have to be Knights or Soul Weavers, right? So we see that units like Ox Lots who are able to push up with the S2, incredibly enable units like Secret, like all these other units. You don't realize how hard it is for players that don't have an auxiliary lots to play Cleave in Arena. They have to go way out of the box to do something that we take for granted. That some people that have auxiliary lots take for granted. They're like, oh yeah, 100 million DPS landy, Cleave everything. You need aux lots though, right? So it, it's, it's, it's that level that it's like, we don't realize until we don't have these units and we don't have access to this, how strong enablers are. Right. Now that we know what they are, know how they're different from some supports, know who some of like what they do, let's look at a couple of builds. So first, I'm going to start, I'm going to go in order for the, some of the ones that I showed. 
So first, Fallen Cecilia, pretty standard depending on what you want. She does have other builds. She does have a crit hit damage build, but the enabler build is going to be that very tanky, hot, very tanky Fallen Cecilia. This Cecilia is there to make your life a living hell because you are not going to be able to kill the DPSs. You're not going to get past the Shadow Squad. You're not doing anything, right? You're not, you're, you're not touching those units, right? It's thick barriers every single turn. Pretty good speed too, so she's able to cycle that barrier every single turn and allow you to keep that stealth up and allow you to just wreck havoc on your team, right? So that's the Fallen Cecilia. More specifically to one that everyone should be able to do, although this one is built really nicely, um, although it could be better, right? My Ross is not one of the best ones. There are definitely better Rosses out there, but it's, it's a good point for you guys to be able to get. So 236 Ross, again, I mentioned he has to be fast. The faster, the better. I do have him on immunity, since my speed is not over 245, this does allow him to not get locked down as easily, which means he can get off that critical S2 and set up immunity for our nice little team. Very good counter to a lot of teams too when paired with the DPS. So, good, decent effectiveness. Uh, kind of wasted on the effect resistance because like honestly, it, it never really comes into play. It's it's too low for it to actually matter. But yeah, this is it's hard to build. I will tell you that. Like a lot of my pieces have really good substats, and he's still not one of the best Ross that are out there, right? There are Rosses that are like 10 speed faster, uh, way tankier, way beefier, and do the job way better, right? But it works for me, and I'm doing quite well with him. So very, very happy with him. Back in your Clary, who I did talk about briefly, who's kind of one of those borderline units. Uh, you guys already know, I did put the gear back from Cerise onto her. But again, super fast to combo off with my other DPS units, right? So I'm able to stop their initiator and then just take them out of the fight, right? So very, 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 very nice enabling right there. And there are some other ones. Like we could go over the units, but let's just a sample built for those three that I do have. So you guys get an idea. Typically, they are going to be fast. They just want to do their job and set up properly. All right. That is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys learn a ton more about enablers and how and why they're so important to the game. So next time someone asks you who the most OP unit is and you start thinking about the RB or that t Surin or that Spectatimbria, remember the unsung heroes that are in the background pushing them to those new heights that are allowing them to be way more OP than they would be without them. So yeah, that is all I have for you guys today and I will see y'all next time.